Hey, welcome to Garage Talk. As always, I'm Conrad. Let's go. I'm Ted. It's time to rock and roll. Hey, Teddy. Today in the garage, we have a sponsor of ours, Jennifer Swarn. She brought the whole crew from Nicholson 2.0. What's up, guys? Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Really, like it's it. not our whole crew. It's no. not? No. Oh, we, got some, we got some applause for you. So. How many is in the whole crew? I think there's 11 of us in total. So you got three of the 11. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Start down here. Kylie, you're up. Um, I graduated from Eastbrook. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated from Ball State University. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, lived in Fairmount. Had a son that graduated from Madison Grant. Mm -hmm. um, owned Sophie's, rest or Sophie's Ice Cream. Went yeah. the bar. Pretty much it. Got a couple kids. A couple? Couple. Three. Plus four. four. Five. Four or five? Yeah. Five. Oh, go five for it. <laughs> Why not make it a half dozen? There's some right? athletes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some athletes there too. Yeah. 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 Uh, Nate Nicholson, um, Gas City, born and raised. Graduated in 93 from Miss Cinewall. I went to IU, graduated there in 97. Um, yeah, two kids. Uh, daughter who's in the seventh grade, and then a daughter who is a sophomore at Ball State. Um, but yeah, I've been here. I, I did go to Florida for a little bit, um, so I was in Florida for about three years. But I've been here in Gas City for my entire life. There's some athletes in that family too. There's been a couple. There's been a couple. Jim Nicholson, stud. Yeah. All right, he, he was yeah. a man back in the back in the '60s, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right. Yeah. Shout out to Jim Nicholson. You, right. you, you took over for dad, mm. basically, right? Yeah, dad started this business back in the early 80s, um, and he's working on retiring, and I've kind of taken over for him over the past couple years. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's been good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Get it up. laughs> My name's Jenny Swanner. I've sold real estate now since 2014. That's kind of... Not sure, yeah. really, but pretty Close confident enough. it's 2014, yeah. yes. Um, two amazing kids, born and raised in Gas City. Love my job. Love helping yeah. people. Yeah. It's a great community, right? It Athletes is. in that family, too. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and by the way, her, her oldest son said that the daughter's going to be better than him. <laughs> he knows that. <laughs> he does. That's awesome. That's, That's great. awesome. Role of a realtor. Why don't you explain that to some of our people that will be checking you guys out? <laughs> Go ahead, Nate. <laughs> That's on me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, fair question. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do basically is we have access to the MLS system, okay. which, which is we have access to all of the listings in the entire state, in the world for that matter. So what we do is... You come to us and you tell us what you're looking for, where you're looking for, how many bedrooms you want, all that stuff. And then we help you find that. We help you narrow that down. And then purchasing real estate is not like buying a pizza. It's not like, I mean, it's very complicated. Biggest I mean, we, purchase of your life. Absolutely. It's the biggest purchase of your life. No transaction is the same. No transaction is the same. God. Like, well, yes. you're talking well, right? But like but you guys are merging work. together. Right. We're like, like one Voltron, so right? Like, Voltron. There's so many rules yeah. as a real estate agent. What's that? So many rules. Yeah, like, there is. Yeah. So we we have to help them navigate. Is this the right house for them? You know, mm -hmm. whether that's through financial means, like can they afford it? We have to help them on that end. You know, so we're kind of financial advisors. And then is this house right for them? You know, can you afford, you know, this house needs some work. So yeah. we have to kind of help them navigate that. So, you know, if this house is going to need a new roof in three years, you know, are you financially capable of, of doing that? So we kind of help them guide them through that. But then on the other end, like what we have to be educated for is the paperwork end of it. Like, like I said, buying, buying a house is not like buying a pizza or buying... 
you know, a moped from some guy on Facebook Marketplace. Is, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of laws and regulations, and you have to make sure deeds are transferred properly. And we kind of help them navigate through that process, too. So, I think I have seen somebody try to sell a house on Marketplace. Yes. A couple yes. times. <laughs> and it's such a risk. I mean, because there's, there's no regulation in that. Yeah. What we do, like, we have to disclose things. Like, if I come to sell your house and you're like, hey, man, I got, like, three inches of water in my crawl space, like, we have to we have to address that. Like, that can't be something we're going to sell this in good faith and just sell this to somebody and not mention, like, yeah. ah, maybe it'll be, you know, it won't rain for a couple of weeks before we sell it. You know, that's something that has to be discussed, that has, has to be disclosed. And, and addressed. Right. Yeah. And there's accountability behind all of that. So if that kind of falls back on us. You know, if we sell you a house that, that turns out to be a lemon, I mean, that's where we have to get involved to help you, you know, fix that problem. So, are there are there house lemon laws? Like, a, you no, know, with a car? Not really. Not really. Not really? I mean, you have to disclose everything mm-hmm. you know about a house. So if you know the roof's leaking or if you know, hey, every time I flush the toilet, uh, you know, the kitchen sink fills up with water or something like that. I mean, that's, that's stuff that has to be disclosed. Does that happen? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. and that, that's our worst fear is when yeah. that happens because you do everything you can and i'm obviously going off we're obviously yeah. going off our client's word and like they're you, you ask them is there any moisture problems on, in the crawl space and they say no so you're like no nope. and then turns out you sell the house and two weeks later you know the other agent's calling you and saying hey it rained yesterday and their basement's full of water or something you know so you are taking the client's word for a lot of it, but but that's just where we where we come in because we're kind of the yeah. little man. We help. We we kind of know the laws and the regulations yeah. and all that stuff to where we can we can step in and, and help you find a resolution yeah. to any problems you come up with. Let's just say Teddy is a young eighteen year old man. I am, yeah. and he <laughs> want, and he meanders into your office. Okay. And he says, hey, I'm looking for a house, but I don't know what I'm doing. How do you guide him through that? Do you have a checklist? Like, I think Kylie would like to, because she, she deals with this a lot. So she handles a lot of our people walking off the streets. Oh, yeah. Yes. Cool. Because we, we have a system in our office where, yeah. you know, walk-ins go by whoever's there first, and Kylie is usually there first. Sorry, Jenny. Like, <laughs> She likes to sleep in a little. I mean, I'm not sleeping, but I work sometimes. But there's a list of questions we ask Sorry. to try to get a feel for what they want, and yeah. then they help them through the process, right? Yeah, so, I mean, first, that we're trying to figure out what they are looking for, right? Yeah. Um, also, have they started into the lending process? Um, mm-hmm. Because you don't want to go out and find a house that you absolutely love to find out that it's way out of your price range. It's a waste of time for, for me and for them as well, and then they love something they can't afford. So you just kind of go through that checklist of, you know, what can you get approved for? What are you looking for? What areas are you looking for? And kind of go through that, and then we just find the houses that meet that criteria and then you know then we're looking at those houses Mm -hmm. it's hard with an 18 year old though it is Mm -hmm. so you've you've experienced that yes absolutely yeah because they kind of don't know what they want still right well they they want want great unless an 18 year old has cash that they can just bring to the table like there's so many factors that have to play in it that yeah right because then you have to you have to determine can they what kind of loan can they get so their budget may be you know x amount of dollars but then they have to meet the requirements of an fha loan which Mm -hmm. you know is a whole nother set of factors so there's just a lot of factors that you have to look at and you know they want 18 year olds usually want the best of the best. Yeah. But then you have to dial it back down of what you can take to get. Because, like, what you can afford. I watch HGTV sometimes <laughs> and they're like, he's, he's got a million dollar budget. He's a dog walker. Right. I'm like, Butterfly catcher. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what dog are you walking? Right. I mean, have you got something like that where a kid comes in and he's like, man, I'm looking for. A two hundred thousand dollar house, and I need it to be eighteen hundred square feet. And I'm sure that's probably not doable right now, is it? <laughs> but yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying, right? You get that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what do you do? What? How do you? 
you know, one of the, one of the methods, young man. right? One of the methods is you do you, you go show them the mm-hmm. house that they can't afford, and you should like this thing. This place is beautiful. Look at the pool in the backyard. Mm-hmm. Look at the deck. Look at the master suite and all this stuff. And you're like, this is great, and this is a hundred thousand dollars over your budget. So then you have to bring them down to reality, okay? And you have to say, you're not there yet. Like this is this isn't the house for you. You need to go find that thousand foot, you know, ranch over on Mitchell Street or something. Mm-hmm. You know, that, yeah. that's where that's you're even at questionable. Right now. Right. <laughs> yeah, city. Yeah. 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 city. That's questionable. I mean, mm-hmm. right now the market, the way it is, anything under a hundred grand, it's going to require fixing up. Something. That's a yeah. fixer upper. One hundred. And I will tell you, when I got in the business, which you know hasn't been like a million years ago, but. You know, if you had a deal over a hundred grand, like that was a big deal. Uh-huh. And now that's and that's not too long. I'm talking 2018, like 108 or like 100 grand and up. You're like you're on a different level. And right now, a hundred grand that's that's starting price. That's like right. you're gonna have to maybe put a new roof on it. You're Crazy. probably gonna have to. It, it probably needs a new heat and air system. I mean, I mean, the and market grades, is just ridiculous. It's gonna cost you eleven hundred dollars a month. Right, and that's, I, I can remember the first house I ever bought, it was $45,000. Way back in the Shut early up. 80s. But what Absolutely. did you sell it for? Well, probably double that. <laughs> she was like, I've been later, gathering <laughs> pop models all day and I bought this house. <laughs> but that's, and that's, but, but, but just like that, I mean, so, but you guys have to work with, so many different financial institutions, right? right. To, to get the loans for these people, but you guys know where you can go, who you can call. Now, but a big question I have is, okay, you want to be a realtor. Well, what's the requirements to become a realtor? I heard it's pretty difficult. The test is difficult. <laughs> right. Okay, the test is oh, yeah. tough. That's what I meant. The test is tough. And I... And I I'll probably take a, I'll take this one over. But the <laughs> the class is simple. All right, the class you can do online. You can you can sit there online and you could as dedicated as you are, you could probably finish it in a week. I had to do my own person. I, but a couple years later, they offered right. online. And I and I will say you learn a lot more in person mm-hmm. because I took it in person back. Actually, I had my license back in two thousand and ten. And I took the class in person, and then I got my license, and I and I passed it in the first test. Okay, and then whatever the recession hit, so I went back. I was working at Walmart at the DC, and I did that for a while, and then I came back to this, but I had to renew everything, and I took it online, and I was like, well, I've already had my license. It took me four times. Wow. I'll just say it. it took Man. me four times to pass my test the second time. Really? After Never passing it up. the first time. So it did. It took me four times to pass because the test is tricky. And I think it's designed to be tricky. Like, they'll give you four answers. Like, it's all multiple choice, but they'll give you four answers that all of them are the, kind of right. Same. Yeah. But, like, this one is the right answer. But this one's kind of right, but it's not 100% right. So whatever. So the testing part is hard. But, I mean, you can breeze through the class. I mean, you can Google everything, so you can breeze through it and maybe not learn anything, but that's going to show up when you go to take yeah. the test. Right. So that's the tricky part of it. But However, the test doesn't really equate to yeah. the real-life world. Uh, and they never I do. Just, right, right. I just they did the test <laughs> not too long ago, but it's really the what – organization you go with that teaches you and trains you how to do what's best for your clients or what's best for the community and things like that so getting in with the right brokerage is is really a big deal because you can take the test and then you pass the test and that's great but then the real life experience and teaching and coaching starts and if you don't have that then you don't have anything so um, for me that was huge Jenny and Nate have both been mentors for me. Um, and You learn something new every day. Yes, and say. nothing is ever the same. And when you just every think you got it. Every changes, financing all the time. Like, 
Yeah. It, there's something new every day. You think you're finally getting Never it boring. and something new happens and yeah. you're like, I don't even know where to start. And if you don't have that support system of people that have been through it and know what they're doing, you know, that's, that's huge. But you guys have to have a great support system with this company. Oh, oh absolutely. I mean, that's... We have that a is, great team. That is, you, that is our key, is we are a team. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I'll, I'll just say it. Been a realtor for how long? <laughs> oh, two years. Two years, and she's seen every shit show you can imagine. In two I years. I feel like you in always do in the yeah. first couple years. Yes, the first couple years, like even my dad, when I got in, like I, I would come across a situation been doing this for 40 years i ain't seen no shit like this before right and so then we learn and dad learns from my you know the situations and we've all she's been through a lot she, <laughs> she's been through a lot but we're such a good team where like jenny helps out i help out lexi helps out everybody helps out and then we all learn from each other the stuff that she's going through mm -hmm. so then when that happens to us a little bit later down the road we're like i remember kylie went through this and this is what we have to do and and I think that's the priceless thing about our company is that we are all just so intertwined where we're willing to help. Like yep. if, if she has a problem, she could call anybody on our team mm -hmm. and they're all going to help her. And that goes for everybody. And learning doesn't, in our business, I guess, doesn't go from the ground up or from up to down. Like it's right. not like just me teaching her every day. Like I learned so much by the trials and tribulations she goes through. So, and I think that goes for everybody. Absolutely. And every day is a learning experience, and you, you run into something new every day. And That's pretty cool. It is. It's, it's awesome. never boring. No, it's, awesome. it's never, never boring. I mean, nobody wants to work in a boring environment. It right. sounds like you guys. Right. It's not. It's like, not repetitive. Oh, this machine That's for sure. Today, yeah. and this is what happens when this machine. You know, it's yeah. something different. Like, hey, there's a deer on the roof or something you know like how do we saw it you know, it's just something we wild we have seen a deer have we have you guys i have, I have. that has not been one of mine but yes a permanent I mean, reindeer fixture for right me. i mean it's just <laughs> they don't believe in santa claus yeah all right it's just not like <laughs> every day there's, there's something upset. new that happens yeah. Yeah. you know there, there's financial financial issues like hey somebody was getting ready to close tomorrow and they bought a truck today mm -hmm. No. Yeah. So yep. now, you know, that, that happens. Uh, that happens. And you have to figure out, I mean, that that's kind of a big thing with us. Like, You ever say, hey, listen, you're about to buy a house. Oh, yeah. yeah. No big purchases. Right? Absolutely. Because your credit you will. <laughs> right. Do and not go out and apply for a credit card. Don't buy a car. Like, if there's anything that you have to pull your credit for, you call your lender and verify that it's okay. Like, because that can change everything. Huh. I think, like, learning how to manage your credit needs to be, like, a bigger thing taught. Absolutely. 100%. I, like, <clears throat> in high school. Yeah. That yeah. would be a great <laughs> class to have. 100%. Yeah. Like, manage your credit. And there's so, so many factors that go into credit, right? Yeah. Like, it's well, not just pay your bills, mm -hmm. don't be over budget, don't have too much credit have enough credit like there's so many things that people just don't understand yeah they need to tell you like right this okay, is the I amount told. that <laughs> yeah. I, isn't there a percentage like if you got a five thousand dollar credit card or something like that, like that isn't there a percentage that they want you to have on that card you're supposed to stay under 50 percent. i thought it was 30. okay we're agreeing to disagree. Right? No. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, you, you want to have yeah. that money yeah. owed out there because yeah. that builds up your credit. Yeah. Which is... But not too much. I'm old not school. Like, right. But yeah. I'm old school to where I don't want credit. I, like, I don't want to owe anybody anything. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Luckily, I am where I am, but I have... My credit's not that great because I don't have a lot of it because I don't... You know, outside of my mortgage and maybe my, my car, I don't right. owe... I don't have credit card debt. I don't mm -hmm. have all that stuff. Yep. And I feel like I'm doing good, but if I wanted to finance something major right now, my credit's not that great. Right. You and know, and, and it's it's mind boggling because I you have no debt, but I have yeah, no they, debt, they want you to have debt. Of money, so why can't you lend me this money? Uh -huh. And they're like, well, you don't have any debt. And I'm like, I don't understand how that works. So <laughs> it's tricky. And yeah. for the general Crazy. public, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a learning curve. Now, I, I, I do want to know, okay. Yeah. 
what's the difference between a realtor and a broker? We're all brokers now. We're all brokers. You're, a realtor is considered a broker? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah. what was that? A managing Years broker is different. Yes. yes. But it was a broker when I, cause, so that's a little bit different because when I went through class, I was a broker. That's what they called me. So then I put on all my cards, but everybody else said like real estate agent. And I'm like, well, why do I say broker? But they're all the same now. They just okay. changed that within the state. Okay. Managing so when I got different. my license, I was not a broker. But I had to then take another test in order to be a broker because okay. they, the state of Indiana stated we had to do so. But that's the same thing. I'm yeah. not sure I'm managing broker. Okay, so if, if you guys happen to say you sold a house in Ohio. We can't unless you we're can't. licensed. Okay. Yes. You have to be licensed in Ohio as Correct. well. Yeah. Okay. So. We sell in Indiana though. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and Anywhere that, in the state. That was what I was wondering. Yeah, we Where, will go north, we will go south. Where's the furthest away from here that you've sold a house? Oh, gosh. Um, probably. I mean, I almost sold one in Warsaw. All right. That was pretty far away. It's a good two and a half yeah. hours away. Yeah, showed a lot of houses. Almost like Gary. New Palestine for me. New Palestine. Mm -hmm. I mean, Warsaw was almost there, but it didn't make it to the closing okay. table. But I showed several houses up that way. Jenny's still thinking. Columbia City, maybe? Columbia City. Wow, yeah. that's... I haven't sold any houses, Ted. <laughs> 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 I keep hearing, like, it's a great time to sell. It's a bad time to buy. Let's talk about I'm a first-time seller now. How do you walk me through that? Anybody? Where are you going? Shit, I don't what, know. What do you want <laughs> from there? Yeah. Um, so that, that's an important question. Was, oh, okay. To, to where you want to go. So right. I'm because downsizing. I, now, which I'm not, but I, 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 got got kids going off, <laughs> I got kids going off to college, and, uh, which I only had one. So now I'm restarted. Yeah. But I you want to downsize. I have restarted. <laughs> But I want to downsize. I mean, it just depends. There's so many factors. Mm -hmm. Rates are higher right now. Yeah. But there's no inventory at the end of right. the day. So, like, I feel like you're going to make a good chunk when you sell. But what happens when you go to buy? But when you buy, but you're going to spend, mm -hmm. spend the chunk in order to stay within your means of where you are already. Otherwise, okay. is it worth it? That's the tricky part. There, there's a double-edged sword out there because 100%. yes, people that bought their house a year and a half ago that paid a hundred grand for it. Let's just say it's probably worth 140 now, in in less than two years. I mean, it's stupid how that's happening. But you're like, well, I can sell this and make you know I have 50 grand in my pocket because mm -hmm. I put a little down on it. And you're like, look at me, I'm rich. But then. The next house you go to buy it's, it's, is a hundred thousand dollars more. Right, <laughs> it's a hundred thousand dollars. And the rate that you have now that is... you're going to have to pay one hundred and fifty for. So your yeah. downsized house is costing you It'll be what you might owe on your right. What you might make Correct. in profit, you're going okay. to be paying for that downsized house because everything else is inflated. Yeah, you're downgrading, wow. but your payment is not downgrading. Right. That's the great because with the interest mm -hmm. rates in there, because when you go from a three percent rate. To a six and a half or seven percent, that's seven good. and a half percent rate. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a pretty big deal. So, that's the tricky part. Which is why a lot of people aren't selling. Right. right? Uh -huh. Which which compounds the problem because now nobody's selling. So now there's no inventory, which is going to push prices up even yep. higher. Yep. So, it, it's kind of. It's or they go on the market and you need to see them within the first like. 10 hours or you right. don't have a shot at that house right. because there's no houses coming on so when one does everyone wants to see that one yep. house and now you're competing against everybody in gas city to see that house well, we had uh, i'll, I'll throw this story out there today this just happened today we had an agent list a house and within 45 minutes she had an over asking price offer with zero shots and Whew. no contingencies no and no inspections no had never been inside the house. Nobody's even looked at it. And within 45 minutes, she had an over-asking price offer. Dang. That's how crazy things are right now. I'll give you some.
<laughs> wow. Right. I mean, it's not because I mean, she's a great builder, but it's not because she did anything. No, it's just that's the market right now. If you have a good house, it's going to sell fast. But you're also seeing houses that are good set in this market. Well, and it, it, so and, why? It depends on price. Just the price? Yeah. And then the price drops and it still sits? And then it sits and it's rates. Yeah. It's rates. So what somebody could afford a couple of years ago, they could afford, let's say, a $350,000 house, right? Because the rate right. was two and a half, three percent 3%, but now it's 7%. So now they can only afford that 175, but they still want that 350. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, their, their house is still worth 350, but the person that could afford to buy that now can't afford to they buy it. They can't that. afford it, yeah. Right. And the person that could afford to buy it wants a $450,000 mm -hmm. house because that's what they could have bought two years ago. Yep. D and I like to play the guessing game. She always wins. <laughs> look at this she's house and tell me. Yeah. Go D. Yeah, she's like, look at this house. Tell me how much you think it's worth. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, 180. Eh. It's way off. <laughs> 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 because I'm still, I'm, I'm still stuck in 1996. Right. I know, Absolutely. and a lot of people are, but that's yeah. just not where we are anymore. Yeah. Right. I mean, a, I wish I was there are, with you guys. Are we on the housing bubble? Uh, part two? See, I don't think so. Possibly? No? I, I mean, the bubble back then was, you know, back in 2008, 2010, whatever you want to call it. Back then, they were just lending money they, out Yeah, to subprime everybody. loans and right. stuff like that. They were just lending again. it to everybody. Yeah. I think the reason prices are so inflated right now is as simple as supply and demand. It's just that there's not enough supply to keep up with demand. I think that's why the prices are high. And the only way that the bubble is gonna burst is if you, all five of us and 15 of our friends decide to list our, our houses all at the same time. And then right. that's, that's- Let's do it. <laughs> Let's fix it. Then Let's that's get everything then we're gonna go. Right. Is that legal? Can we put the fix in it. on that? Let's go. Is this being recorded? <laughs> <laughs> no. But yes. I think that's what it's going to take. Yeah. That's what it's going to take is there's going to have to be a lot more inventory for the, our bubble at least. Now maybe you know in an indie bubble or Houston or Miami or Completely something that different. might be totally different. But for here, I know that our community there's a big demand for our community, especially so, in Gas City. Right, especially yeah. in Gas everybody City. Everybody wants so, to be in Gas City. Everybody that, jokes like, "What are your streets made of gold over there?" Uh, and and I laugh because I I've been here since '75, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, same old streets I grew up on. Yep. But But there is a, there's a lot of demand for our community right now. And That's what I was going to say. We don't have you know, the housing to, to yeah, keep you, up with it. You guys are based in Gas City, but you sell all over the state. Absolutely. But in Gas City, that's it, it's where everybody wants to come. Absolutely. I mean, it's. Like I said, and so speak on Farmington Trace. You guys just. Right. So Farmington Trace, that it's, you know, we're expanding that. And we understand that that's not for your first time home buyers unless they just, you know, got a job at Eli Lilly right out of school or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking in the three hundred dollars to $400,000 range for this place. But why it isn't so important is because there's not a lot of. I guess your second home opportunities mm -hmm. for people for the first time home buyers that bought their house 10 years ago and now their family's gotten bigger and they want to upgrade there's not a lot of options for them mm -hmm. right now so we're hoping and it should pan out that you know these are going to be their second home mm -hmm. their forever home hopefully, yeah. and they're going to sell their first home and then that's going to free up the market a little bit to where 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 there'll be more inventory and, and, right. and bring the prices back down. Um, but we're pretty excited about that. We, we've had a lot of a lot of outreach, a lot of people interested in our new in our new lots. Um, I, I think they have a building is tough right now. I mean, it's very expensive. I mean, construction yep. costs have went way up. Wood. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wood's expensive. So I don't think it's going to change. Right. No, for I a think while? Right, ever. I don't think it ever will. Ever? 
Because I yeah. think yeah. everybody's got to use the those I mean, prices. the price of an yeah. OSB yeah. board is right. Right. Do they like, ever really bring prices back example, down? Your dad and I earlier were talking about he had a third car garage attached to his two car garage. $7,500, what, 20 years ago? Mm. Is that what he said? Less than yeah. that, but yeah. Probably. pretty close. It's over $35,000 now. Unreal. It's not going to change. No. Everyone Contractors have got to... used to that, uh -huh. you know, $40, $40 sheet yeah. of, of OSB, and that's just kind of where we're at. And Do prices ever go back down? Though? No. I feel like once they go up, then that becomes the Do new they? norm. And then that's, they may stay level at that price, but they don't really go back down, right? Each decade they go up and up yep. and up. And, mm -hmm. you know, in the 80s and 90s it was different. And now this is just where we're at. And it may level off at some point, but it's not going to go back down. Right. Inflation's hitting really hard. And without us going into a discussion on presidential race, <laughs> I don't think it's going to go down either. But. No so, politics on this podcast, no, Conrad. No, no. Just brews. Uh, or in some case, waters. What are you supposed to say? Whatever you're drinking. What are you supposed to say? Cheers. Um, what is the coolest house you were able to go into and sell? Ooh, I say, for me, it was the one in Harbor City that just got the accepted yeah. offer. Craig, it was an amazing, I wish I could have bought it, really. Had a theater. Yeah, I know it was just an amazing house, very well built. Um, had like the in law quarters, a uh, whole kitchen downstairs, theater room, like you couldn't hear from one room to the next. Everybody had their own wing. It was amazing. Everybody had their own wing. Oh, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. So, Did you have an in law's quarters? In law? Wait, am I understanding this right? <laughs> like your in-laws come oh, out. Oh, 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 that's where they stay? Yeah, Shopper the rooms. I, I, or, <laughs> or you have a college-age student. Okay, okay. So they can yeah, come in through yeah. the garage and never even oh. let you know where they are, and they have their own kitchen, and then they leave from that yeah. area. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. wonder who you brought home at night. <laughs> Don't get me pissed off, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'll agree with her totally, because we... That was one of the coolest listings we had, and we started it off at $1.2 mm -hmm. $1. million in Hartford City, Indiana. Man. All right? So right now, but, you know, red flags are going off. Like, there's not a house in Hartford City. But this one was. It was over almost 11,000 square feet. Who? Oh. It was crazy. I can't even count. I think it had six or seven bedrooms, right? Five or six. It had three kitchens. Everything was high end. It's on Blackford Country Club, so it's on a golf course. I mean, wow. anywhere else, I mean, that, that's a $4 million house probably. I don't, all brick, new roof, like three Special heating. garage for the golf cart on the back side of the right. house? Like wow. Three HVAC systems in it. I mean, it, this place was amazing, but it was in Hartford City. And we actually just got it under contract here recently for quite a bit less. But, but yeah, that, that place was awesome movie theaters, I mean, it was just how the other half lives, and to see that, and you wouldn't think the other half lived in our that, city. That's like the point five percent lives. Yes, right. absolutely. Yeah, like you want to know what did you do for a living to 100%. be able to build this house. But do you really want to walk from one end to the other? I mean, just think, though, if you didn't have to, like, hear your kids <laughs> fighting. Like, that would be great for me if they were <laughs> If you came over <laughs> and I, I mean, had that house, you'd be like, hey, you, like, no, they had no, they no had toilet inter paper in here. Yeah, the intercom <laughs> system. All you had to do was get on the intercom system. Hey, Conrad. Yeah. <laughs> floor two, I need. Uh... I mean, if you think about it, it takes about five minutes probably to show a thousand foot ranch. Like, you come into a thousand foot house, you're like, here, three bedrooms yeah. back here. It literally took you 50 minutes. Really? To just show them the whole, just to walk them around the house and, like, hey, here's the kitchen. Here's, here's the office. Here's the. You know, I mean, it, it was it was an amazing house. Do you have to make them wear the CSI boots so they don't stain anything? <laughs> the, the little CSI yeah, right. booties. Right. Seller preference. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, yeah, so make you sure you have matching work. socks on when you go I to mean, see I houses. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to yeah. leave there. We had a broker open there, and I was like playing with all the gadgets. I had all the fireplaces going. <laughs> I had the music on in the theater. Like I was like, this place is fabulous. But. Man. 
I liked Quarry Road. Like, just the character and... Is that the one with the barn? Yeah, the barn. You could have a theater there also. It, it just, it was... See, but, but a lot of people these days, they're, they're wanting property that might have a pole barn. Right, yeah. Yeah. On that property as well, right? Right. Is, that's something that's they do. big right now, they right? Do. Absolutely. I want the house, but I want a pole barn. Correct. Have you ever had to show a farm, like where you had to put on some like thick rubber boots and walk out? <laughs> we walk acreage all the time. Yes. Yeah. Really? Don't ever wear yes. white tennis shoes. I wore white tennis shoes to show you that <laughs> day, and it had just all the snow had it melted. And as soon as I stepped out of my car, I was like, this was a bad decision. <laughs> and you just got to keep going and trek through it. And yeah. Keep smiling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. You still have them shoes? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> Strangest thing you've seen at home, if you feel like sharing, because we know some of it. Because <laughs> <laughs> some people love to hear this shit. I don't need a minute to think about that. <laughs> really, there's so many things. So many. Uh oh. <laughs> you just see so so many different levels of how people take care of their house. Mm -hmm. Like you walk into a house and. This is, a, this is a prime example. So I walk into a house, and you're like thinking this place needs gutted, right? You're like, you you need all this new stuff. You have to gut this kitchen. You have to gut the drywall. It smells like you can say that. Like, it, this place is horrible. And then you walk away. There's on the wall. Right. Your yeah. people don't buy it, and you walk away. And then two days later, it's pending. And then somebody's moving in a month later, and they're just moving their shit in. And they're, they're just, they ain't done thing. Like, they maybe ran a sweeper, but that's it. And I think that's the thing that we, we have to be very conscientious of as realtors is, you know, people's standard of living is different. Uh -huh. Like, you know, a lot of us think, oh, well, you have to have barn doors and you have to have granite countertops. And some people are just like... I need a roof. I just, right. Yeah. Oh, bathroom. I, when it rains, I don't want to get yeah. wet. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. it. And when I have to poop... Yep. I can go poop and yep. flush, <laughs> yeah. and it's going to disappear. And, and it's going to disappear, <laughs> right? Well, and, that, yeah. and and there's a big difference. So I, I think that's something we're really good at is we can we can handle the guy that that wants the caviar and he wants the, the granite countertops. But then there's also the people that are just like, hey, is it warm at night? Because <laughs> that that's really all I'm looking for. Yep. And, and you have to, and you can't be judgmental because everybody's different. You know, nope. everybody's. Yeah. People aren't looking for the barn doors, and they're not looking for the farm sinks, and they're yep. not looking for all the things you see on HGTV yeah. like you see. Yeah. There's okay. some people that just need a place to lay their head at night. Yep. You know? So I will say, when I was going to be a realtor and I was thinking of all these great things, I thought about all the HGTV shows that I watch, and that's what I was going to show was all the HGTV shows. And then I started showing, like, the foreclosures. And How many windows have you been? I, well, recently too. But, but, so that was a big shock for me because here I think I'm showing all these HG, you know, granite countertops. And then, like, I open the door and I'm like, you can go first. You know, make sure nothing jumps out at us because, you know, you don't know what you're walking in. They're, you know, not, not the greatest. So that was a big shock to me. And I still jump every single time I open a door, afraid that some kind of critter may jump out. At some point in time, um, so that was definitely something that I had to get used to. Indiana is probably full of these houses. <laughs> you go in, and you're like, "This house was built in 1901," and the hair on the back of your neck stands up. <laughs> it's Have haunted. You? I haven't had any of those. So you haven't. Look, You're talking haunted houses. Yes. Like, like, <laughs> wait, ha, have you had any of those experiences? I've like, heard some stories, yes. but I or, have not. It just depends because some people believe in ghosts. Are you a ghost believer? No, I'm not. No, see, I, then I, I have probably didn't have it. Agents <laughs> that have told me this house is haunted. Really? Yes, I have. I do have people that will ask. Has there been a murder? Has anybody yes. died in right. here? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I don't think so. I mean, like, because that's just not usually a question that we ask. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are some people that are very superstitious about, okay, if they have died in here, how did they die? Like, was it just natural right. causes or did something I happen? I mean, I feel like if you have a house that was built in the early, early 1900s, somebody's probably died there. 
True. But yeah. we don't know. Like, Great I Danny. wish we could go back and know all the stories <laughs> yeah. that happen at, like, every time you walk in a house. The old J.C. Knight. The... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> My favorite school. <laughs> Thank you. So back to haunted houses. Haunted houses, yes. That you, you don't believe in. I don't right? believe it, but... I do. You do? Yes. I knew you probably I mean, did. really, have you ever been in a house where the door creaks out of nowhere and you're like, who's here? Yes. I, I do. My house was haunted. What do you mean, was? Well... <laughs> I sound like crazy. Did you throw here. some sage up? Yeah, I did. <laughs> really? 100%. But I did that later, just to make sure. Oh, okay. But, yeah, there was a story. Someone died in my house. Long story short, I had worked with my neighbor. She called her husband. Hey, where did this person pass away? And it was, like, where I thought people were looking at me. And I came home that day and was like, this is my house. You're welcome to stay, but don't make me feel uncomfortable. And it's been good sense. <laughs> Wait, you talked to the room? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, okay. I like it. I mean, it's true. I wonder how many houses in Gas City are like that. Harder? Yeah. Yours is. Jeez. First time I walked in there, that's what I felt. Really? Because you didn't know what tell I feel? Because <laughs> <laughs> haunted houses are so intriguing. Because I can't believe like some people aren't saying, "Hey, show me a haunted house. I want to buy it." Because I, you know, Travel Network. You ever watch that? They they be going to all kinds of haunted houses. They love that shit. They have all their. Yeah, the gear and their speakers and their sensors and all this stuff. Yeah, the heat thing. They're yes. like, oh, hey, if you're if you're here, say uh, yes. Shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> but now, 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 Conrad was he asked me to ask this question. <laughs> Have you ever had a house that somebody's trying to sell, but they've got a room that they don't want you in? Nobody yeah. said, hey, uh, ignore that right. fresh patch of cement over there. <laughs> I will say this. A couple weeks ago, I showed a repo that was in pretty rough shape. And it was actually in a decent neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And from the exterior, it like the setup of the house was great. But you walk in, and you're like, this is kind of cool. And then you look around, and right at the hallway, you could tell something died right there. Like, there, there was blood splatter. Oh. There, there was shit going this way. And you're like, that's not and then you look over there and there's another one. So it kind of resembled a multiple homicide. Oh, oh man. <laughs> and, but and the strong smell of bleach didn't bother you, right? No, I mean, <laughs> honestly, it still smelled like cat piss. All right? So the cat piss took care of all of that smell. <laughs> but, uh, but you do see that a lot. You, you see, like, it was blood splatter. Like, it was. I, you know, ah. I, I'm not saying somebody got murdered there. Maybe a cat had some bowel issues, but there was like Blood. trails. Some bowel. There was trails. Like there was like you somebody can... drugged the body. Right. Through like the house. Just... <laughs> All right, man. There was claw marks on the drywall. Right. <laughs> right. I, I, I didn't pay no it mind. Was, rough, but... was that was that a cat or a female that had her nails done? Right. But she <laughs> That's, I, I can only imagine because you. My wife's an insurance adjuster. Yeah. She sees a lot, too. She sees a lot of stuff. That, oh, to me, what you guys, like your careers, it's pretty cool. You know, I mean. It's never the same. Never at all. Today will and, not be the same as tomorrow. Tomorrow is not the same as the next day. It is never the same. And, you know, I think that's kind of a, a cool thing of what our company's about. It is we're all pretty real people. Like, we're, we're not, we, we don't try to come across as salesmen. Like, we're not just right. there yeah. trying yep. to sell you a house. So when we get in that situation, like, they, they were friends of mine. But mm -hmm. I, I walk into that house, and it looks like somebody just got their whatever blown off right, right. there in the living room. And you can be real about it. You're yeah. like, I don't know what happened here. <laughs> but you're like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure somebody got shot right here. I'm like, I don't know. So that, that aside, let's go check out the master. Right. <laughs> like, that. Nothing a little kills that can do. Like a, that was a flesh wound. Hey, we got a walk-in closet down the hall. Check <laughs> right. this out. Right. 
but we can be we can be real with our people because I think the cool thing about us is is we, we don't have clients necessarily, but they they turn out to be our friends, and, and right. we can have these conversations. Like we're not there, like yeah, like we're that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be like, oh, that's nothing to see there. Let's go check out the master. You know, we're gonna be like, no, that's messed up. Like I don't like that. <laughs> right. Well, it's. Like, yeah. that's messed up. But, like, yeah. we're not here, ju- like, there's no ignoring the big blood stain in the middle of the carpet. <laughs> right. And we're not going to ignore that. We're going to be like, hmm, that might be an issue for you. You know, and that's something you have to discuss. But that's the cool thing I, I feel about the team we have, that that we're not going to just try nothing to worry about here. And, like, mm-hmm. that was just, like, they had a bad afternoon. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to be like... <laughs> Hmm, that we're going to figure it out. Check this out. We <laughs> might not like it, but we will find out, and right. we will tell you, and or we, we you can know, go there, from there. There was a thousand other things wrong with that house, and we're going we're gonna to say, hey, you're probably going to need new windows, yep. or this roof shot. Uh-huh. Whereas if we were salespeople, we'd be like, oh, that's nothing, you know, 12 bucks, and right. oh, you know, a gallon mm-hmm. of pitch, and you can yep. fix the roof. You know, I, I think that's where, where we're good, is because we, we probably spend more time talking you out of a house yeah. like we're, right. we're going to point out what's wrong with right it because you know that's our reputation we don't want to like be the guy that convinces you to write an offer on this house it doesn't matter oh you can fix that you can, because it's more important to us that you're you're buying what you think you're buying would you attribute that to why nicholson has been in business for so long absolutely 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 because I think they, even though like some people may be new clients, they become friends. Yeah. And, like you wouldn't want your friend to like buy something they didn't want. Like right, you ultimately you're not gonna let them buy it, make a bad decision. Right, like if I'm not gonna buy a house, you know I'm gonna point out this needs a new roof. All right, then this HVAC, it's on its last leg. I, I mean you want the, you don't want to say oh well it was built back in the 70s. Mm-hmm. They don't build them like you know the, a salesperson is gonna try to give you every this house yep. to where we, I my personal opinion is I want to give everybody like I want them to think about every avenue like I don't want them to have any surprises and I don't want there to be anything that comes up after the sale to where they're like well they just pushed this on me and said you know you, you need to buy this because that that's a lot of pressure on us and I don't want to do that I want you to be informed and I want you to make a decision that, that, that makes sense and, and that 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 came down from the top from absolutely. your dad, that's, right? That's the way dad your dad taught you, and absolutely, it's this way, or because you know, chances are that that's not going to be the forever home. Mm-hmm. You know, in probably seven, eight years, they're going to probably move and buy a different house, and you want them to come back to you. I mean, that's how that's how the business is supposed to work. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I, if you buy a house off of me, if you decide to move in five years, I want you to come back. To me. Right, mm-hmm. and if I do you right, yep, you're going to come back to me. Mm-hmm. All right, you're not going to think about all the other realtors out there like, well, hey, maybe I'll try that. You know, you're like, hey, Nate did me right the first time, uh-huh. so I'm going to come back to Nate. And if I'm just trying to sell you, like, just so I can make commission on this one sale, right. I mean, mm-hmm. th- th- in the long run, that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And, and I think there is quite a few agents in our market right now that, that are very good salesmen. That, and I don't, I don't want to over quality. What's that? Quantity over quality. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think, I don't think sales is any part of our job, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't think it is. I mean, we're. we're I not... really, truly like get sad when I'm done with my buyers. Yeah, because I do yeah, because, because you're I, friendly. I build relationships with them, and I'm yeah. like, we look at this house and we look at that house, and like we look at everything. But like, you do build a friendship, and like when you get to that closing table, you're like, dang everyone's lives are busy and like I don't know when I'm going to get to talk to these buyers again right like it's hard sometimes Absolutely. but it's not as can I use you for an example Jenny sure okay so we bought this house Jenny sold it to us which she also sold two of our houses but the people we bought this house from had a like a ladder thing above the stove and it went with them, and my wife says, I really like that. You know, closing day, we come home, there's a ladder sitting in our house to put above the stove from her. Right. 
They're building. Re- you guys are building relationships. I really like, like the truck that was in front of our house. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, it meant so much. To <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't deliver that. Uh, <laughs> but you've got really good neighbors. Oh yeah. <laughs> you have great neighbors. You couldn't ask You're for right. better. You're right. You're absolutely right. I but, take that back. But the truck was so. <laughs> <laughs> but that oh, so now, now, Kylie, you've been doing this for how long? Um, about two years. Why did you want to do it? Um, I was looking for something new. I was in insurance sales before. Um, I wanted to be a part of the community. I traveled the state of Indiana, so I wanted to be local. Um, I've always been interested in houses. and. You're a people person. I, I'm a people person, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Some oh, people yeah. would say and, yes. <laughs> and yeah. you guys are have a couple of our businesses yeah so i needed shop. flexibility right which again that was kind of a be a realtor because it's so flexible you can make your own schedule which is not really the case but right not uh, at all no no because you work 24 <laughs> hours a day is what i'm finding out but you do have pockets of time that you can do other yes. things which i need for five kids and two businesses <laughs> but um i just wanted to stay in the community and this Nate, you know, is a family friend of Travis, and yep. it's where I ended up, and it was the best decision I made. I, I really like it, so. Jenny, why'd you get into it? My neighbor. Your neighbor? My neighbor was a real estate agent, and she was like, you should come work for us part-time, because I was in dentistry for so long. Uh-huh. And I did, and I actually went and took my classes with her mother. And her and I grew to have a relationship, loved the family, and I worked dentistry for four years, Mm -hmm. and then I'm like, I'm just going to take the plunge. But it's hard. You're self-employed. Like, unless you conquer it, you don't get paid. It's all on me, yeah. So, but it was worth everything. Like, I wish I would have did it, like, the first year in. But, but how about you, Nate? I mean, it it took you a few years, remember, right? Mine was different, all right? So so I grew up in the industry, obviously. My dad's been doing it since, I mean, that's how I was raised. So I, I've always been around the industry, and I've always loved it, and I've always had a thing for houses, obviously. But I kind of always wanted to do something on my own, okay? So I went to college, and... You know, I got into sales down in Tampa, whatever. But uh, but then I came back and I and I fell in love with golf, and I ended up in the golf business. So whatever, I was at the Marion Elks for for about nine years, and I did that. And then some life situations um, had me working at Walmart, and that was fine and dandy. Um, and not to ruin the mood here, but but then after a while. Um, my wife and I got a divorce and blah, 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 all that stuff. And then she had cancer and she ended up passing away. Um, so now I'm working at Walmart, working second shift at Walmart. And I had a, a 13 year old daughter, 14 year old daughter that I had to raise on my own. So trying to figure out, you know, talking about what she was kind of talking about earlier, like what can I do to be able to raise my daughter on my own and, all this stuff, and I obviously I can't do it from Walmart, you know, working second shifts. So I ended up getting my license back and doing this full time. And um, it was really, honestly, a, a series of unfortunate events that got mm-hmm. me back into this business. But I, I am very, very grateful because I haven't missed a kid's game since. You know, I take my kids to school. That's the beauty, I think, of this business. Mm-hmm. is if you can afford to pay your bills by doing it. But then I take my daughter to school. I pick her up from school. I, I take her to practice. I can see her. I, you know, I can see my kids do all the things mm-hmm. that working at Walmart I was unable to right. do. Right, yep. You know, Walmart was a great company. I mean, they get a lot of, you know, I mean, it wasn't fun by any means, but, you know, they paid the bills. Um, but what this business has meant to me is the family time. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, yep. I've been able to, to watch my daughter grow, I was there when she needed me, yep. and and that was awesome. And I couldn't have done that without this business. So I'm forever grateful for that part of it. Uh, I never would have imagined that it had turned into this. Like Dad would 
retire so soon, and now yep. all of a sudden I'm the guy. And, you know, that was never the intentions at all. <laughs> but we're running with it, and we're, yep. we're, every day we learn something new every day. And he does um, a great job. I mean, that's yeah. a as great the guy. story, dude. I mean, it's, it's that is kind a of great story. And don't it's let him lie, because we do have a lot of fun. We do. You know, we it, do. We it's have not fun. just about that. More we have fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all of us have, like, a little bit of what makes it all work. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it just works. You know, her story. You know, she yeah. she was very scared to go out and do it. Like, uh-huh. it's a big deal. Like, when you're used to that, getting that paycheck direct deposited every week, to all of a sudden, like, you don't make no money unless you sell a house. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. if I show you a house, I don't make any money for showing yeah. you a house. I well, don't show you a house. You can show you ten houses. Right. right. And, and maybe not make anything, right? Right. I, I mean, it, you only get paid when you sell a house. Right. Like when it's done. It so you're stepping out me. of your comfort zone. No, I. it was really hard for me to leave Bruners. It was. like. Well, that's a, that's a good family. company, too. Yes, and I had been there, and it was it was hard just because I didn't want to leave all the people there because it was great, but it really did factor into, like, what Nate said when it comes to, like, flexibility. Like, I might be like, I remember going down in the basement when I was at Bruners and calling the babysitter and being like I'm on my way to get my kid like I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore right. you know and it works and I do I do appreciate those things that real estate yeah. brings to me I mean, well, because we, it's crazy you, you could spend a Sunday showing six houses right could be Super Bowl Sunday it doesn't mm-hmm. matter nobody cares but then also you know your Tuesday you might you might not have had any appointments on Tuesday mm-hmm. so it's a lot more flexible to where you you determine your schedule. Mm-hmm. And if yeah. there's something that comes up, like I was in Cincinnati in a volleyball tournament this weekend, mm-hmm. and I had a couple opportunities to show houses, but I'm like, I can't show you a house this weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm in Cincinnati. So you can make that. Whereas if you're clocking in at Walmart, right. they don't give a shit. You got to be like, there. Yeah. Like, it's going to cost you three points if you don't come in. Today, right. you know? if you're but like, I will say with our team, people that are like, that's what I appreciate too with our team. I'm in Cincinnati at a volleyball tournament or I'm in Cincinnati for a basketball tournament or whatever. I can call any of you Absolutely. and say, hey, those people this, are yeah. taken care of. Yep. That's, yeah. And, and that's, that's You the can take awesomeness. a vacation that's cool. and so, all right. the people are taken care of. Like if I can't show a house, like these people have, like this is the only time and I can't, I could call Jenny and she's like, yeah. I could call Kylie and she'd be like, yeah, or Lexi or, Vice versa or Drew or any of us. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of special. Well, and, and that's what's neat because, you know, I see all three of these. If their kids have a ball game, mm-hmm. they're there. If it's basketball, if it's volleyball, if it's softball, whatever, they're there. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Family it first, is. right? I mean, right, because that, family first. That, they grow Absolutely. out of that, right? You only have so much time with your kids. And, I mean, I have – like I said, five, and they they do a lot of everything, and I have one that does everything that she can possibly do, but mm-hmm. I'm able to be there She's for... She's plucked out of your back. Right, right. I'm able to be there for all of it, and if I can't, like, you know, there's times I've said, hey, Nate, I'm not going to be able to make it to pick up my kid. Could you please run and get her because right. and she's going to be sitting outside. And he's like, yeah, I'll go, you know, and, and oh. that's the great thing about working local and mm-hmm. with people that you consider yeah. friends that you can call and say hey Jenny can you keep my daughter a couple hours longer because I'm just not going to make it and they, right. they always do yeah. it's kind of like Conrad when he texts me he says dude I've been drinking too much I can't, I can't make it tonight can you do it <laughs> for the fourth night in a row <laughs> a little trivia okay can you guys guess how much the most expensive house ever sold cost where at gas city um no not in indiana i can tell you this and this is going to sound political but it's not but i guarantee mar largo is worth more than just saying in the united states or the world the united states i believe it was the house Dan Brazilian lived in, rented or 
something in LA and it was like how do you know this I watched it <laughs> I mean, you know what? Are you getting your facts? Is that, this TikTok? Is this no, TikTok? It's, I'm not on TikTok, but I'm on Google. But I'm going to say. It's I, this, this like is, a private residence. It's www.mansionsglobal.com. Okay. I mean, you're, you're in like 240 million, right? Billion. Oh. You got to go billion. No, it's wow. Million. It's million. It's a penthouse in okay, New York's New York. Billionaire's Row. Right. Billions. So it's, it's 240 million. No, tell penthouse. me it was Derek Jeter's. Tell me I don't know my market. <laughs> <laughs> I hit it on the nose. It was $240 million right on the nose. No shit. <laughs> and that's why we work for Nate. <laughs> so, what is the most expensive house in the world? You want to take a shot at that one? In the world? It, in the world. That's got to be in Dubai. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not? Mm-mm. Paris. King Charles III. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not just uh, one of them. There's three of them. Huh. But, oh, in the but, 380 okay, okay. range? Is that where we're at? Am I, am I now, you're you're way, way off. far off. Four point nine billion dollars. Billion? See, I was in the billion, so you were in the billion. That's the world, though. The British billion? Crown. Did yeah. you say billion? billion? Yeah. So February second of twenty twenty four, this was updated. So you guys can retire on that commission, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> He's like, I was going to buy a one billion dollar house. <laughs> Don't right? call me for a week. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And Bill that's, Gates, his house is only $130 million, so. Right. Well, he's yeah. Bill Gates. As yeah. An animal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Beyonce's house is worth $190 million. She's in, her, in the Illuminati. Their Illuminati was Oprah's house. Oprah had a house in California that was ridiculous. But then I've heard there was that some guy in Atlanta, producer, uh, he had some ridiculous amount of land. It was like 120 acres on the outskirts of Atlanta. And he, uh, Nate, who's your your most senior realtor? Who's got senior? the most time? Most time. As a realtor. Oh, shit. My dad. Okay. My dad has 45 years. Is he still working for you part time? Absolutely. He still has. He'll never retire. Oh, yeah, 50 years. I'm sorry. 50? 50 years. (laughs) This year was his 50th year. Wow. Um, I don't know because it's kind of different because it could be, I don't think it's it's Jenny. No, Robin. I think it's Robin or Craig. Craig Craig and Robin. Craig and Robin. So Robin Wendell, Craig Luthi. Robin Wendell or Craig Luthi. And and who else do you have? We also have throw them out there. Let us know who they are. Mosier, but he's he's been, not he's, he's two not months, a senior yet. Yeah, but he's doing awesome. And then we have Cassie Irvin, who's a year in. Uh, Lexi's Lexi. probably she's less than you, right? Yes. So Lexi's probably only seven eight years. She kills it. But she's doing awesome. Um, we obviously know about her. She's only got two years in. Who she's missing? killing it too. Who am I missing? I don't know. Tom Eastus, he's, we, we just took him on from Point One Realty. Okay. Not too long ago, it was Point One kind of dissolved. Um, but I think he's only been doing it maybe five or six years. Yep. So it's going to come down to probably Craig or Robin. And I'm not sure which one came first. And that's, uh, but, but then Elaine works for you guys. Elaine's right? Elaine, Elaine is, is, is the real veteran. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's the she's Elaine is and the glue. She, 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 is she, is she makes it I, I graduated athlete. with her. Did you really? Yes, I okay. did. Yeah. She's fabulous. She and absolutely is. Yes. And she, she's been in for 15, 17. 17 years? 17 yes, she years? just told me today, 17 yeah. years. 17 years. Wow. Like working for dad, and she's kind of been dad's, mm. you know, right hand woman mm-hmm. or whatever you want to call it. But Elaine, honestly, she's 
she makes sure the ins and outs are working and she makes sure everybody's informed. Like, she's awesome. And oh, she's it, a couldn't it, do it absolutely. without her. Angel on earth. Yep. Absolutely. 100%. Well, and, and that's like social media. I mean, okay, you, know, you got your pros and your cons about it, but that, that helps. That's got to help you guys so that, much. Okay. You guys post I, stuff so all the time. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because there's a couple different advertising. You know, that's all advertising for us, obviously. Yep. So th there's a couple different school of thoughts. Like, obviously, there's some people that believe billboards mm -hmm. are the answer. And billboards, I don't know. I, I'm not sold. The first year, last year, I, I was all in. And I, I spent a lot of money on billboards. Yep. And in my opinion, billboards feed an ego. Mm -hmm. Like, if you, if I want to yeah. see. I feel like social media you, feeds an ego. It this is too. Can I give I mean, my it's opinion? The same thing. Absolutely. Like, word of mouth. Is like, right. Yes. Word, word of, mouth. of yeah. mouth. I agree with you. Absolutely. I agree. But you have to have more than just word of mouth because you're trying to be out. I mean, more than just you your small. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying to develop a brand. I mean, mm -hmm. and right. Between all of us, I mean, I, I, I'm on Facebook all the time. I'm yep. on Instagram. I'm on all the things. TikTok? And, and sometimes TikTok. I love He's TikTok. on TikTok all the time. <laughs> TikTok. But you're on it, and at sometimes it, 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 there's a delicate balance because there's a lot of times because she'll share my posts. Mm -hmm. She'll share my posts. And then Elaine's sharing my posts. And then Elaine's husband's sharing my posts. Mm -hmm. And then so, like, I'm scrolling through, and half the posts are for me. And I'm like, so I, I do understand that I don't want to put myself out there to where people are like, I'm sick of seeing Nicholson Billy shit. Right. Yes. And, and they quit following. Right, but Nate, what I but about. Elaine's friends may be different. I mean, we all have a lot of the so same friends. So it's a delicate balance. Right. Because yep. No, I, I know what you're thinking, but they're, she's but right. But it's free it's, advertising. Yes. It is. Yeah. It's it doesn't totally cost me a thing. Uh -huh. Whereas every billboard... That's like six hundred bucks a month. Uh -huh. Every billboard you see, yep. six, maybe six on yep. the cheap end. So this is free advertising, and I and if anybody's like me, you're always on your phone, you're always on uh -huh. Facebook, and the more I can get in front of you, right, mm -hmm. the better. So, but it is tough because a lot of times I will get on Facebook in the middle of the night, and I'm like, look. But I feel like that's just because it's like, your it's, page. Maybe, maybe that's not what your guys' page to looks you. like. But, but I get on and I, I post it like she had a closing today, so I put a post right. her about her yep. closing, and I'll see it, and then I'll see Rex shared it, and then I'll see Kylie shared it, and then, uh -huh. and then Brian shared it, Brandon shared it, and yep. I'm like, am I over what? So, I haven't figured that piece out yet. So if anybody wants to let me know, say, hey Nate, this is too much, I'll I'll back off a little bit, but. That's how you have it's to get not, your brain. Because every Friday at 9.30 right. a.m., we advertise Jennifer Swanner. Absolutely. Thank you. At Nicholson 2.0. So, yeah. So, I need to be better with social media, I know. Yeah. I need to, like, really, like, <laughs> you did start great tonight, though. sharing She's and, like. Amazing. But we appreciate you guys coming on. Yes, we Thanks do. Thank you so much. Finally. Finally. You had fun. <laughs> <laughs> Try three. Thanks to the boss, right? <laughs> yes. Thanks to the boss. Was, yeah. we, we finally reached out to him, and he was like, we got to do this. I'm like, Absolutely. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Nicholson. Hey, anytime. This has been yeah. fun. <laughs> thank, you, thank you all you three. Do yeah, it next was, week, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Right. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having us.